Python. Yes, you heard me right. One of the internet's most beloved programming languages and also the world's longest snake. I don't know why I said that. It's a language that I've gained some experience with ever since my Pi game debut just three short years ago. Ever since then, I've had this strange desire to return to Python, but specifically with one goal in mind. And that was to create the most cozy, heartwarming Python game of all time. And I know, I know, it's, it sounds silly. But recently as I stared outside my window while sipping on a cup of decaf hazelnut cinnamon cream tea, an idea struck me. And then at that moment, I realized it was time. Time to return to Python. So after sitting Blue's Clues style in my thinking chair, I went to my handy dandy dry erase board to brainstorm some ideas. I'm close to finishing my first commercial game, Dewdrop Dynasty, after five years, so I don't really have time to make something crazy. So after brainstorming some ideas, I was torn between two ideas, an aquarium game or an autumn cafe game. And I think you know which one I ended up going with. So not wasting any time at all, I jumped straight into Python and started using Pygame to code the mechanics. I had a feeling that this game was gonna be more illustration heavy, so getting the gameplay loop right at the beginning was critical. And speaking of gameplay, I decided to make a no pressure idle clicker style game. Basically, you got your little coffee stand on your right and a list of upgrades on your left. As you buy the upgrades, you make more money and you can watch as your coffee stand grows from a little rundown shack into a thriving business. Pretty simple, but uh, fun. I hope. So with a chip on my shoulder and a twinkle in my eye, I jumped in the VS Code and set up a basic window. I then added a background color and then drew a sprite onto the screen just to make sure everything was working properly. Next, I created a total money and profit variable. Basically, every second or so, your current profit rate would be added to your total money. So for example, every couple seconds, you'd earn like $10. I then drew the text every time you made money so you could see it. Look, at it's going up. I also added your total money in the bottom left, so so far, so good. And with that out of the way, I went straight into making the upgrade system. I added a row of five to six sprites on your left that you could click and purchase. Upon clicking it, if you had enough money, boom, you got yourself a new buff slash upgrade. And obviously, I'll add text to these sprites later on, but for now, they will remain as blobs. Next, it was time to make these upgrades actually do something. So I made it that every time you purchase an upgrade, either it improves your profit or it improves something that I haven't talked about yet, and that's tips. Obviously, just sitting around and watching the game play out isn't very fun. So I wanted to create a tip system that would randomly drop and you pick them up and earn some extra cash. And then any upgrades that kind of improve the ambiance or the quality of your coffee would improve the amount of money you get from tips and also the rate at which they drop. So I add in these basic coins that get thrown out and if you click them, you gain some money. They also have gravity so it looks like they're being thrown by invisible customers. Right now it looks very odd because there isn't any artwork. And speaking of artwork, I think it's about time that we start making some. Because right now this game looks like a mess. So I popped over into my vector program of choice, Affinity Designer, and I got working. For the artwork, I wanted to push myself a little. One of my main roles at my day job is being an icon designer. Essentially, I just simplify objects to their most basic form. And though I absolutely love making icons, one downside that I've noticed is making more detailed designs for me is super challenging. So I was pleasantly surprised with how the artwork turned out, especially the background. I mean, those trees look so delicious. I just, I just want to eat them. Now for the coffee shop artwork, I took inspiration from Japanese yakitori stands. And really from this point on, I really leaned heavily into that Japanese. Japanese theming. I even turned the money from dollars to yen because why not? I added a little cat barista and then spent a good chunk of time designing various props, banners, and coffee making devices. I also made uh, like a worn out coffee stand that you'll start with and eventually upgrade. After all this, I had to export everything out and add in the props one by one. It was very time consuming. I even exported out the background and layers so I could add these little leaf particles. At this point, I got heavily into polishing and balancing the game. Simple things like hover states over the buttons, having new upgrades appear, having like new props appear when you get upgrades, custom fonts, and even a custom cursor. Thank you, Kenny. This, I, this is like my favorite cursor. I then added some forced ambience and some basic sound effects like clicking and clicking. And after all that, it was time to add some music. As usual, Bonzo Bean Machine made a sweet little track for the game, but I wanted to create a music playlist system that essentially would start another track once 
one was finished. So I still needed a couple more tracks. I ended up just grabbing a few additional stock tracks to help fill out the playlist a little bit more. And with a few other little adjustments, the game was done. And for how incredibly basic the gameplay is, I found myself relaxing and playing it for a good 20-30 minutes straight without even realizing how much time had passed. Of course, as always, if I had more time, there's like a million things I would love to add. More upgrades, random events would be fun. Having customers actually walk by and sit down in seats and maybe they leave a dirty mug that you could clean. All these things I think would add so much to it and just give it a little bit more interaction. I don't know, what would you add to a game like this? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, if you're interested in playing the game for yourself or you'd like to see a part two to this video, please let me know and I'll see what I can do. And if you're interested in learning how to code and don't know where to start, then check out a word from today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and program solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and of course, AI. One of the things I love about Brilliant is it helps you build critical thinking skills through problem solving, not by memorization. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you're also becoming a better thinker at the same time. Also, another thing that's become a necessity for me over the last couple of years is being able to learn on your phone or computer. And Brilliant's app makes it easy to learn pretty much any Anywhere. Whether you're diving into a new topic or doing a quick practice session, you can level up at home or on the go. Now, Brilliant's growing collection of programming courses is a great way to build timeless programming skills to thrive in the evolving world of programming. From learning Python to developing intuition for programming logic, you'll get hands-on experience with real programs and you'll learn how to think like a programmer. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash goodgifts, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Make sure to use my code to get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything Brilliant has to offer. So go check it out. Thanks so much for watching and uh, check out one of these videos that YouTube thinks you might like.